In this video, we will be discussing ASTM C215, an NDT method that can be used to determine the dynamic modulus of elasticity, dynamic modulus of rigidity, and Poisson's ratio of a concrete specimen. This test is performed by exciting various resonant modes in the specimen by using an impact. The signal from that impact is then collected and analyzed to determine the desired specimen properties. First, we will take a brief look at the procedure for this test. During testing, an oscilloscope is used to collect the signal measured by the accelerometer. To generate that signal, the specimen is impacted using a hammer. This impact can be at various locations to generate different resonant modes. This will be discussed in more detail later. That signal is then stored and processed on a computer. During this testing, a LabVIEW program was used to collect both the time domain and frequency domain signals. Lastly, the collected signals can be analyzed to determine their respective resonant frequencies. Those frequencies are then used to determine desired properties such as the dynamic modulus of elasticity, dynamic modulus of rigidity, and Poisson's ratio of the concrete specimen. Those properties can then be used to characterize and monitor the quality of the concrete. ASTM C215 describes the test setup used to excite the fundamental transverse, longitudinal, and torsional resonant modes. That setup includes the necessary impact locations needed to excite the desired mode, and driver and pickup locations if the forced resonance frequency technique is used. In this testing, a hammer is used to excite the specimen, so we will only focus on the hammer impact and accelerometer locations. One difference between the ASTM C215 standard test setup and the modified setup used for this testing are the support conditions. ASTM C215 details different support locations to allow for free vibration in each mode. The modified test setup used for this testing opts to use a support foam instead which allows free vibration in a simpler way. Every other aspect of this setup follows ASTM C215 directly. Here is a more in-depth look at the test setup, including specifics on the hardware used to collect the signal. A brass ball, as depicted on the left figure, was used during this testing to excite all three vibration modes. In the image on the right, a large hammer is shown that could be used to excite lower frequencies. A LabVIEW program is used to collect and save the signal generated from the impact. This LabVIEW program showed on the screen has several features. The specimen type is inputted, either cylinder or prism, and data about that specimen, such as mass and dimensions, are added. This information about the specimen is simply determined by weighing and measuring the dimensions of the specimen. The vibration mode that is being excited should be selected as well. The desired frequency range the signal will be found in is also inputted. When the specimen is impacted, the time domain and frequency domain signals will be plotted, and the calculated property, seen in the bottom right of the front panel, is displayed. Let's take a look at how this plays out when testing the transverse mode on a concrete prism. Data is collected in the LabVIEW program and saved into a .dat file containing both time domain and frequency domain signals that then can be used to be analyzed further. It can be seen here that the peak frequency for the transverse mode was found to be at 2621 Hz. The saved signal data can be processed and analyzed in MATLAB for several applications. In this case, the time domain signal and frequency domain signal were plotted to verify the results shown in the LabVIEW program. The peak frequency that was found from exciting the transverse mode can then be used to calculate the dynamic modulus of elasticity of the specimen. The dynamic modulus of elasticity is related to the mass of the specimen, the fundamental transverse frequency, and a factor labeled C that accounts for specimen dimensions. The process is shown in depth here, and the calculated dynamic modulus of elasticity was found to be 
30.24 gigapascals. Now let's take a look at exciting the longitudinal mode of the specimen. Once again, here are the results found on the LabVIEW program after collecting the signal. And here, the time domain and frequency domain signals can be seen after being plotted in a MATLAB. The peak fundamental longitudinal frequency was found to be 6047 Hz. Using this peak frequency, the dynamic modulus of elasticity can be calculated again, this time using the fundamental longitudinal frequency and not the fundamental transverse frequency. The step-by-step -step calculation can be seen, resulting in a calculated dynamic modulus of elasticity of 30.37 gigapascals. This value is very close to the value calculated from using the transverse frequency, which is a good sign that the testing has been accurate. Lastly, the torsional mode will be excited and used to calculate the dynamic modulus of rigidity. The peak fundamental torsional frequency was found to be at 3,501 Hz. Looking at the frequency domain signal, we can see that the transverse mode was also excited by our impact along with the torsional mode. We can know that the torsional mode is the peak at 3,501 Hz because we already know the location of the transverse mode for this specimen from earlier testing. This result can then be used in a similar fashion as before but this time to calculate the dynamic modulus of rigidity of the specimen. This value was found to be 12.04 gigapascals. The Poisson's ratio of the specimen can then also be estimated by utilizing the previous dynamic modulus of elasticity and rigidity values found. This Poisson's ratio of the specimen was found to be approximately 0 0.258. To summarize the results from this test, the dynamic modulus of elasticity found by utilizing the transverse and longitudinal frequencies were very close at 30.24 gigapascals and 30.37 gigapascals respectively. The dynamic modulus of rigidity determined by measuring the fundamental torsional frequency was found to be 12.04 gigapascals. The Poisson's ratio is approximately 0 0.258. To summarize this test, First, the specimen was set up and impacted in various locations to excite the fundamental transverse, longitudinal, and torsional modes. The signal from the impact was collected and analyzed to determine what the peak frequencies were, and those frequencies were then used to determine the dynamic modulus of elasticity, dynamic modulus of rigidity, and Poisson's ratio of the specimen. These values can then be used in various ways to evaluate the quality of the specimen. Thank you for watching this demo. If you would like more in-depth information on this test, please refer to ASTM C215.